Hello programmers! This example is going to start with a really simple Xcode example using a storyboard and then I'm going to show how to move the code into more than one file. Start by launching Xcode. From Xcode go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to just leave the under iOS platform app selected and hit next and give your project a name. Um, I'm just going to call mine multiple files a uh, simple example. That's a bit verbose. Um, if you have an, an account for being a developer, you can put that in here. Your organization is going to be um, usually your email address like reverse. So if it's hotmail.com, it'll be com.hotmail. And then we've got our Storyboard or Swift UI, I'm going to pick Storyboard. And I'm since this is just a simple example here, I don't need to use um, core data or testing. I'll go ahead and hit Next. Decide where I want to save the project. And this is the first video on my channel that uses a storyboard. So all of this code was created for me. We can ignore the first two Swift files. Um, this over here on the left hand, side is our navigation panel. You can close or open that. If you accidentally close it, you can reopen it with this button. And we've got a storyboard, which is the user interface components, and then code that goes along with that, which is in our .swift, the view controller is the default name, but you could change that name if you wanted to. So let me go ahead and put in a few labels and buttons. Right here, there's a plus sign here with our object library. I'm going to choose a couple labels and I'll just drag that down here. You can over here with the um, attributes panel, you could close and open that attributes panel if it's getting in the way, but I need it if I want to change the font size. So something a little bit bigger so my old eyes can see it. And then if I'm going to have font that's bigger, make sure that we've got room to display it. I'll go ahead and center that font. And if I wanted more than one line, I could put it in there. We could change our font color. We could have a cool shadow effect for our font, which because my blue color looks almost the same, let me pick something that's, there we go. That's kind of a cool effect there. I can clone that label. I'm going to clone it one more time. So I just did Command C, Command V because I'm on a Mac and that's what you're going to be on if you're using Xcode. So I've got another label. Now I want two buttons. I'll go over here um, to that object library. If I couldn't find it, I could start typing in button, but really buttons the second thing there. So it's not too hard to find. Drag that down there. Same thing, I can change the attributes for that button. I can change what's displayed on the button. So click me. And if I want to change the font color, the background, so it looks more like a button. That's not a good contrast with those colors there. Uh, maybe let me pick a different color. I'll look at my color wheel, something where I can actually see what's going on. And once I have one button I like, I will clone it. Font's a little bit small. So I changed it to a font size of 40 for that. I'm happy enough with that button, so I'm going to copy and paste that. So I've got two buttons now. And now the fun part is hooking up the code for these buttons. I'm going to go over and choose assistant so I can see the code side by side and I'm for now done with the attributes um, inspector so I'm going to close that attribute panel and I'm going to select each of these labels and hold down control and drag into my view controller code and this was my label one so I'll just call it label one and this one's my label too. And then I want the labels to change when you click on the buttons. So I'll select my button and do the same thing. Hold down control and drag over. This time it's going to be, well, when do you want the event to happen? 
I'm going to do when you touch up inside the button, that's when I want that to happen. And I'm going to say button one, control drag, and we'll do a button two. And if you want to verify that things are connected correctly, hover over um, in your code, like the labels, you can see that that's hooked up, that's hooked up. And another way to check is if we open up that attributes panel and we have something like the label selected, I can see that that's connected to the view controller. I can see that the buttons are connected. And when you touch up inside, it's going to run button one. If you touch up inside the other one, button two. So one thing that's a gotcha is if you change the name of one of these, if I say, oh, I want this to be button one pressed. And it may generate an error when you run your code because if you click on the button, it still thinks the function name is button one. So I'm going to delete that and drag it this time to the new name of the function, and now it's hooked up correctly. All right, so I'm happy that those are hooked up. To double check, let's do some debugging. I could just say print button one pressed, and then the same thing for button two, and then we'll add some real code. To run it, just hit this run button, and there's a pull down menu with all the possible devices you could run it on. I'm just randomly going to pick one of these phones, um, but the phone that I'm emulating right here is the iPhone uh, 14 Pro. So in the simulator, I can try those buttons, and I see if I click on button one, it says button pressed, and I didn't change the other one, the text to say button two pressed, so either way, it'll say button one pressed. If you're not seeing the debugging messages, there's a, um, a way to collapse this so you don't see it or expand it. I'll go ahead and hit stop to stop playing there and change that to button two press. But let's do some, let's do some real code here. Uh, I want to show an example where some of your code goes into another file just to make things simpler so this one file doesn't get huge. Um, even though this is not going to be huge, I'm going to go ahead and create um, an array with some text that we could display. Um, greetings is going to be the name of the array. And I'll start with a few greetings. Hello. Better spell it right. Hola. Howdy, something like that. And then when you press button one, let's have it change the text for that first label. So I'll do label one dot text is equal to, and then I could randomly pick one of those greetings. Oh, let me be a little bit more careful with my spacing there, a space before and after the equal sign. And so I want to pick one of the greetings, if I put a zero, it would do the hello. If I put a one, it would do howdy. If I put a two, or one, it would do hola. Two, it would do howdy. But I want to randomly pick a number there. So I'm going to create a variable random number. And I'll randomly choose something in the range of zero which will give me my first greeting. And this was a greeting. Greetings uh, count. That'll tell me how many items are in there minus one. Okay, so it's randomly going to pick one of those, and that'll be my index into the array. All right, let's test that button out. Go ahead and hit play, click button one, and we get howdy. And we can see all of those greetings. All right, let's do, let's work on the other button. So the other button, I was going to have it keep track of the number of times I've clicked. So I'll create a variable clicks that starts out at zero. And every time you press button two, it's going to increase by one, so I'll say clicks is equal to the old value of clicks plus one, and my label two text is going to be equal to, and I'll say clicked 
This is a lot of text that so may not fit on the label on one line. Um, times. Let's give it a try. Go ahead and hit run. Good. Okay, so I'm happy with that, but depending on the complexity of the screen, your code may get a bit overwhelming to have it all in one file. So if you want another file, we could just do file new, file, and then I'm going to make this another Swift file, and this will be a bit of a helper. So I'm going to say, like, helper file. I'm not very creative with my names today. And I'm going to make this an extension of the other file. Let me put it in the same place as the view controller. So if I wanted that list of greetings to be in another file, we can just take it out of here. And then it could be a global variable inside this helper file. And let me save and run and verify that we didn't break anything by moving that into the other file. Still works fine. What about moving some of the code for the button presses over? We could do that as well. It's going to be a little bit more complicated, but first I'm going to move, how about the button to code? And put that in my helper file. And now I need to add something to make sure it knows, well, I'm still talking about that view controller class. So I'm going to make this an extension to add on to that, even though it's a separate file so we can keep things a little bit cleaner. I'm going to move it, uh, move that function over to this helper file Swift, but really this code contains something that's an extension to our view controller, which was the name of the other file that has our button code. And notice we still haven't broken anything. We could even move that other function over if we really want this view controller file to be very slim and trim. We'll move this function over to our helper file as well. And you can see that it's still hooked in. It's still the button knows what the name of the function is that it's working with and we haven't broken anything and now we have two different Swift files that are helping us populate this storyboard. All right, that's it for today. Happy programming!